Welcome to this new how-to. In this how-to, we're gonna use again little nav map, but in this case, in a special scenario. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use little nav map on two machines. One, which is this one, which you're currently seeing, which has Flight Simulator installed on it. And the other one, which doesn't have Flight Simulator installed on it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect them to each other. Which makes it possible, for example, if you get a second machine to install little nav map on that, use that for flight tracking, I use that for, I would say, reading your flight plan. And the primary machine, again, the one which you're currently seeing, uh, you can use it for a uh, flight simulator and of course flying. So what you need to do is, first of all, you need to install little nav map on that remote machine. But hey, that isn't that hard, right? You can find the download link in the uh, description of this video if you want to uh, download the tool. But assuming that you might have watched my uh, previous videos, you already should have it installed. But if not, you can find it in the description of this video. Now let's go to the remote machine. So the remote machine is uh, this machine, right? And you can see that it comes up with some errors, right? So it says, hey, I can't find any flight simulator installation on this computer. Also, no scenery uh, library has been found. That's pretty interesting, right? But again, it makes sense because there's no flight simulator installed on it. So it will not be able to figure out where to get the data from. And that's where, let's say, our journey starts. And our journey starts with the little nav map database. So let me switch back to my other machine. Here it is. So the little nav map database can be found in the uh, app data roaming a barthol and then you will find the little nav map uh, db directory now if you don't know how to go to that app data directory then pay close attention because i will show you quickly so what you can do in this case you can uh, go to the uh, menu bar and then say a percentage app data from application data and then again on that percentage then it will bring you to the app data roaming directory, and that's where you can find little nav map navigation database. Inside the roaming folder, you will find the a bar file, and there you will find the little nav map db. Right. So depending on the size of the, let's say, uh, size of your scenery, which is likely a lot because it's also uh, this one, for example, the Microsoft Flight Simulator one's 808 uh, megabytes, and that's with all the world updates installed. And then we've got the uh, little nav map Navigraph if you got the Navigraph uh, version also installed. Now you can do two things. You can either copy the whole directory, right? Which is the little underscore nav map underscore db. Or you can only copy these two files because these two files are the most important ones. The other ones are backups of files, uh, but you can, let's say, optionally, you can also copy them. I will go for the easy way, right? I will copy the complete uh, directory. Then I will go to my uh, thumbnail, right? And then I will uh, paste the folder and hopefully there's enough space on it. Because if not, then we've got a challenge. So let's have a look, right? Almost there are 20 items are being copied. Then I'm gonna uh, say uh, eject the drive, right? Gonna do it using the, uh, let's say easy way. You can go to the properties and then say, oh. Go more properties. And then you can uh, select the option to eject. That's one of the things. The other thing, of course, is that's a really easy way is simply pull it from your machine, which I'm currently gonna do. So it's there, right? And then you see, you say OBS Studio, which I'm using for recording my videos. Uh, so let's sh show you a little nav map, but I'm gonna switch to the remote machine, as you could already have guessed because that's the machine which needs to have the little nav map database. So let's have a look and how we can get it there. So I plugged in the USB drive and now I'm gonna acknowledge the errors, right? Because I don't want to see them and says, okay, welcome, that's fine. And then start some other stuff. To go to the manual, uh, then I press, okay, hey, uh, little nav map can create a recommended directory structure. Well, you can do that, right? That's fine for me. Uh, and then we're going to press OK again, and then we're good to go. 
Now, there's one important thing which you need to be aware of is that you need to close the um, little nav map utility before copying a database. But I'm going to do it in two steps in this case because else I can't control the machine. So I'm going to go to the explorer and then I go to the folder where I, uh, or the drive where I copied little nav map to. And then I can press Ctrl C, right? So Ctrl C simply for, if you don't know it, it's a shortcut to copy files. And then I'm going to initially paste it, uh, let's say in the folder where I want to paste it. And that's the little nav map folder. So I can do the same trick. I can go to uh, app data, percent sign, remember press enter. And then if we're lucky, it goes to that folder. If we're unlucky, like you currently can see, it doesn't do anything. Uh, so let's do it again. Oh, here it goes. It was a little bit fast. Hey, Barthel, and here you'll see the little nav map directory. And as you can see, there are files, but they're not too big, right? There's the uh, Navigraph uh, files there, which is the default Navigraph uh, database file. But you don't see that other file which contains the data for little nav map. Now, again, as mentioned, what you need to do is you need to close little nav map. As you can see, I've got a little bit of challenge here because for some reason it decided to open it like this. Uh, so let me uh, see if I can close it. And that will be kind of hard because, hey, this machine doesn't have a mouse. Uh, well, it has a mouse, but the mouse is, I would say, a little bit broken. Uh, so I'm going to. Put in the, where is it? The controller for the mouse, right? There we go. There it is. Switch on the mouse. Also helps. And then I'm going to right click this folder and then say close because I will simply want to close it. It says, hey, do you want to close it? Yes, I want to close it. And then I'm going to go back one folder. Uh, and before I can paste it, I need to again plug in the USB drive. It's a little bit hard, I would say, with only one uh, USB drive. So here we go, kind of press Ctrl V. It will say, okay, it will not warn you, me, right? Because most of the files are, I would say, uh, there, or aren't there, I should say. And then uh, now press the wrong option. So copying again, I say replace all the files. Uh, so make sure that if you got the option to replace files that you're selecting yes. Because else I would say a little nav map will I'd say not work uh, correctly. So again, USB stick out of the machine. Then I'm gonna connect the mouse again. And then of course we can simply start little nav map. And hopefully it will now open in normal mode, not just like what you saw earlier. Because that will become a little bit else become a little bit hard, right? To show you what happens. So it says, okay, hey, okay, this is the same warning as always, right? So uh, and now it has opened it, uh, but as you can see, it's still say not opened 100% correctly. So I need to say resize the window and then uh, expand it. Uh, you can close the other windows like this one. And now little nav map should have everything, right? So there are some things which you of course can check, right? So what you could do is you can search. And then you can open the airport search. And as you can see, already there are several items over here, which is good. However, keep in mind that the scenery library, which might be enabled, might be this RAC cycle 2408. So what I'm gonna do, just to be 100% sure, I'm gonna disable it because then I'm 100% sure that it's using the flight simulator uh, database. And as you can see, right, if I would type in AHAM, uh, it will find uh, Amsterdam Airport, uh, hopefully with all the details here it is so looks good uh to me so today rsc cycle 2409 has been released right so this one is already outdated if you want to know how to update uh, i would say these items then have a look again at the top of this video because there's a link to a video where i show you how to update the uh navigraph database for your little nav map installation and um, in this specific scenario you could decide to simply uh, put it on this machine, right? Which is the remote machine. And then simply install the uh, latest update for uh, Navigraph, which would resolve the issue. So that's installing it, right? So that's cool where everybody's happy, but hey, we don't have Flight Simulator yet. 
So what we now first need to do is go back to the other machine. And on the other machine, uh, let me do that. You can see that Navigraph is still running. Uh, you can keep it running. It doesn't hurt, but I would say uh, it's also not necessary. Uh, because before we can continue, we of course need to start, you can already guess it, Flight Simulator. So we'll pause the recording now, then I will start Flight Simulator, and then I will show you which other steps you need to take to connect the remote machine to your little nav map uh, or to your machine where Flight Simulator Flight simulator is installed on. And how we're going to do that? Well, you can already see that there are some, let's say, cool tools. Uh, and one of them is Little Nav Connect, which is by default comes with the installation of Little Nav Map. And this one is the one which we need because this one allows us to connect from a remote machine into this machine. See you back in a sec. So we're back, right? So now it has started Flight Simulator and we're already located in an airport. It's Luxembourg Airport. And now it's time to start Little Nav Connect, right? Because that's the tool which we need to do. So again, you can find it in the Little Nav Map folder. There you will find Little Nav Connect, which is, let's say, kind of a mini application. Ah, By default, it will say, okay, hey, I want to get some access, right? So keep that in mind that you might need to, say, approve it. Uh, and I'm unlucky because it was hidden uh, and then I can't show it to you. Uh, so let's zoom out again and then press uh, allow. This is required because else it would say we'll not be able to connect, right? And it doesn't work. So if we now look at this small window, we can see a few things. First of all, say, okay, hey, uh, this is the version. It's connected to a flight simulator using SIM connect, which is a default option. It's listening on this port, right? This is the port where the remote machine is connecting from. And these are the IP addresses, uh, which are, I would say, in my case, uh, the ones which are, uh, let's say, available, right? So two IPv6 and one IPv4. Uh, use the mouse to select the host name or IP address. I can do that, right? But that's not necessary. You can see it also detected that I'm running Flight Simulator, which is good. Uh, if it doesn't detect it for some reason, you can change it here. And if you go to the options, this is where you can change some, I would say, enhanced features. Uh, some of them are not used by uh, some of the other flight simulator tools. And if you don't want to see the hostname and IP address in the log window, you can also disable it. By default, the options to fetch the AI or multiplayer aircraft as well as the ships are switched on. And the update time interval will be uh, 5000 milliseconds. So now this one is running and it's connected to the simulator, which is good. Uh, we can, of course, go back to the remote machine. So let me do that, right? So let me uh, pause recording shortly and then switch back to the other machine. So we're at the other machine, right? So let's now connect to it. You can see that I made some space by closing some windows here. And what you now need to do is maybe something different, right? Than you're used to. So what you need to do is you click, you need to click on tools. There you will find the option connect to flight simulator. Uh, and there you will have multiple options, like these are the ones which are, I would say, by default, right? But this assumes that it's, I would say, installed locally. But that's not the case, so we need to click Remote and Network. And that's where the hostname or IP address comes uh, into the play, right? So in my case, I can uh, specify the IP address. Dot, uh, one dot, uh, and then I can say this. So make sure that you check the port and then press the connect option. And as you can see, magically it has figured out where my aircraft is. And for those who are, want to know where it is, well, let's have a look. Uh, so as you can see, it's, it's a pretty close to Stuttgart, right? But hey, where is it? It's There, the zooming does not work 100% correctly, as you can see. It's located at Luxembourg Airport, right? So that's where the airport or where the aircraft is located. Now, uh, once you've done that, right, you can simply, let's say, load the flight plan by clicking Open Flight Plan or start planning your flight if you want to do it after you did connect. Now, there are a few things which you need to be aware of. First of all, if you ignored the pop-up which you saw I would say earlier on, while on the primary machine where Nav Connect was running on, 
you won't be able to connect and you need to manually, I would say, create the firewall rule in the Windows firewall. If you don't do that, well, you can already guess what happens then. Likely would, we would get an error here and you won't be able to connect. Uh, that's one thing uh, which I would say, or potentially one of the things which you might hit if you're not, uh, say, trusting the pop-up and say, hey, I don't want to do it. Uh, to do that, you need to go to the Windows Firewall, right? And then simply add the rule for that specific uh, port. So don't open more ports. Also restrict it to only the local network because else you might, I would say, uh, say open more than needed. And for firewalls, it's always the better to keep it as close as possible to avoid any issues, even if you're on a local uh, network. And now it's time to fly, right? So... I, and that's also where we stop the video because, hey, flying, there are a lot of videos uh, from me about that and also from a lot of other YouTubers. So have fun uh, watching one of those. So in this video, what we did is we made sure that we copied the database file from our primary machine, which contained flight simulator, to our remote machine, which doesn't have flight simulator. After that, we uh, launched flight simulator start a little nav connect which is the application which needs to run on the primary machine and then use the options in this menu right in the tools menu to connect to the remote machine which now will send almost live data from the primary machine to the remote machine which allows you to use a second machine to follow your flight while playing flight simulator again here in this video i hope you liked it if you liked it then click the like button and of course, don't forget to subscribe to my channel to receive notifications about new videos I'm posting. And I want to thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it useful and I wish you happy flying.